we need to make uh, really fundamental progress on race and on gender issues. So part of what I'd like to ask is, uh, and we've had several discussions of racism, what do you think is, uh, when I was running for office, I proposed a truth and reconciliation process, a very public discussion all over the state, uh, convened by institutions and advocated by the governor. What, what is it that you think uh, needs to happen in the larger state so that these, uh, these questions, which are front and center and yet often not discussed, so that they get discussed and we can make real progress um, and, and going to the heart of, uh, of I, I don't think solving, but at least, at least being honest and advancing how the questions are not only discussed, but how we interact. Well, um, I think there's a couple ways to approach this. And at a recent talk uh, with legal services ab advocates, my, my uh, former colleagues, uh, we were talking about storytelling. Mm -hmm. And we were specifically talking about how, in many cases, we are dealing with race, you know, people dealing with multiple layers of oppression. Mm -hmm. um, and it really, you know, I really, it hit me, I don't know, years ago, but it really began to really began to formulate my understanding why am I so frustrated with uh, not not even the right and their their lack of discussion of race it's more the left who isn't getting it right because and it's worse because the left is wrapping itself and progressives are wrapping themselves and how they want to deal with racism and when you do that and then also don't implement and don't know what you're doing, you actually make the situation worse. Mm. So I've said this, um, and I don't mean to sound so controversial, but the real, I think the, the f fourth level or the next <coughs> movement for civil rights mm -hmm. and race dialogue is for my incredible, dedicated colleagues who also identify as white to um, turn and organize white people. Uh, love that they want to be allies and be in spaces for racial justice where they're predominantly people of color. But I said, I note an irony that some of my friends who will go out of their way to become racially competent and learn Spanish and to organize with Latinos at the border cannot turn around and tell her Republican father why he shouldn't like or uh, vote for Trump. They could not organize other white people. So I don't think that this step really is about having more racial talks amongst people of color, because those talks are important, but it's the same people show up all the time mm -hmm. to them. Uh, people who get it are people who think they get it. Mm -hmm. uh, the issue is uh, there's a, if there's an advantage and a natural affiliation that race is bringing, it is for white folks to talk to other white folks about racism in a real way. Um, and that organizing is not happening. Mm. I am finding overwhelmingly uh, really incredible, smart uh, racial justice warriors who are white insist on being in communities of color. And being in as in going to meetings or meetings, or? organizing, working in the organizations, or uh, running these organizations. Yeah. And that is not a bad thing, but if you do that without being able to organize in Newton or in Brookline, on Weston or in Sudbury, uh, where a majority of Massachusetts residents live, not in communities of color, they live in the suburbs around other white folks. If you're not able to organize your own community, then I'd, I think you need to recognize your limitations about 